This video is brought to you by Squarespace. This is where Catherine Hepburn lives. And over here is where Ron Galella is staked out in the rain. Ron Galella. For Ron Galella. Violated a 1975 court order. All of these pictures have been taken in public places. Ron, uh, is this worth it? Is it worth going through this kind of thing? There are very few jobs in this world that are more controversial than paparazzi. Children of tomorrow! Now, yeah, what's that? Sorry, man. <laughs> what are you doing? And there was one man more notorious than any other. Ron Galella. Galella senses that something is about to happen. He's right. The show goes. Ron Galela's legacy is a mixed one. To some, he's a leech, vermin, stalker, harasser. To others, he's a revered artist. So which is he? A creep or a hero? Yes, that was a reference to the Ants movie. How did you know this was going to be what you did for a living? The Korean War was on. On Sunday, June 25th, Communist forces attacked the Republic of Korea. I enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. I had the only camera that worked in the Air Force, so I got all the assignments. I was interested in the glamour world of celebrity. Congrats, Justin. 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 And it's curiosity that drove me to, to photograph them. We want to know what these celebrities look like in real life. We see them on the screen as superstars, glamorous, but are they as glamorous in person? Around the 60s and 70s was when Ron Galela started out in photography. Paparazzi was an industry that didn't actually exist in America at this point. Photography of celebrities in this era was very different. It was all controlled by the studios. It was all beautiful and glossy. The celebs looked like God. And you can see that if we look at these pictures of Elvis and they're taken by a photographer called Alfred Wertheimer. And this was a photographer paid for by Elvis's team. But then let's compare that to this photo that Ron Galela got of Elvis. Ron captured reality. Natural beauty, realism, captures stars as themselves. And the way you capture that is them doing things. It's very difficult for the studio photographer to get this because most of them are trying to be what they're not. You know, they're not being themselves. It's hard to be yourself in front of a camera for celebrities. But when I shoot, I have it easy because they're themselves, they're talking to each other. There are all these pictures of you being photographed while you're taking a picture. A lot of photographers don't like to be in pictures, but not you. I love being photographed. I'm somebody. You know, in my tagging class, there was a Mrs. Costanza when I was in high school. She said, you're either somebody or nobody. And at that instant, I said, I'm going to be a somebody. It was interesting to find out that Ron didn't really care that much about the creations of these celebrities. He purely just liked the fact that they were glamorous and famous. He was more interested in their lifestyle than their work. But you see, no one really knows the names of paparazzi. They're not famous, their photos are. But for Ron, that would all change when he met one woman. Uh, wayside, wayside, this is the situation room, I read. This is the latest information we have from Dallas. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he is dead. This is Kennedy, was in the car, as we said, with President Kennedy. He slumped into her lap. Jacqueline Kennedy, the world's most famous and mysterious first lady. The woman who retreated into silence, refusing interviews. In 1963, when JFK was shot, Jackie Anassi, or Jackie Kennedy at the time, was sat next to him. Pretty traumatic, I could imagine. The president is dead. And so the nation had become very interested in seeing how Jackie recovered and dealt with the loss of JFK. And like maybe it was a way for society themselves to mourn about JFK and the fear that they had just lost a president. Her grief had become the country's grief. And so this gave Ronga Layla an idea. 
Before we continue with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Having a good looking website is so important these days in business. And so many people overlook it, probably because it sounds like a big job. And it sounds very expensive, but luckily for you, Squarespace has you covered. With tons of incredible looking templates, you can pick and change them to fit your brand perfectly. It's very simple, it's very easy, and it's actually fun making a website on Squarespace. There's loads of built in tools that can just take your brand to that next level. Things like appointment scheduling or members only content, and even even email marketing. So many people will judge your business based on how your website looks. So why not give yourself an advantage against the competition? Be sure to check out squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. Now looking at my camera, I don't like pose stuff. That's why uh, Jackie was my ideal subject. And that's why I call my New York my girlfriend, and Jackie, of course, my girlfriend. So and all of a sudden we see Jackie come out the side door, and she didn't see us, and she walked to Madison Avenue, and we followed, and when I got to the corner, I made a good decision. Rather than run after her, I hopped a cab. The driver, I didn't tell him, he blew his horn. He was interested in Jackie, too. And Jackie turned, and that's how I got that picture. Jackie Windblow, oh, I call it my Mona Lisa. Ronald Galela would take pictures of Robert Redford, uh, Elvis Presley, Marlon Brando, but his favorite subject slash victim was Jacqueline Onassis. To say that Ron had an unhealthy relationship with Jackie O would be an understatement. Yeah, he would obsess over her. He would sneak into places that she was. He would arrive at places before she was even there. He would literally stalk her children. He would break into the school to go watch their like Christmas performance. And all in all, it got extremely weird. One instance, he took a picture of John F. Kennedy Jr. riding his bicycle in Central Park. He jumped out in front of John John, and he fell off his bike. The Secret Service arrested him. Ron, are you disappointed by what happened today on the stand? Not really. Every, every case has his up and down, you know, and it's... After his arrest, he sued the Secret Service and Jackie O. The photographer says Secret Service men shove him around. He sues, claims the bodyguards deprive him of his livelihood. Jackie countersues, charges invasion of privacy and harassment. And in 1972, Galela versus Anassi became a public massive trial. This was the first time that a celebrity or a public figure had sued the paparazzi. Would you say then that this may very well be a precedent making case? I don't think there's any question that there are very vital precedents involved here. There's a conflict, perhaps, with respect to rights of privacy, and there certainly is a conflict with respect to what's the right of the press and what's the right of the photographers serving the press. That might surprise you, but Americans don't actually have a right of privacy. They have a right of privacy against the government, but from other people, they don't. And so you might be thinking, how, why is this allowed? Like, why is it legal? Ultimately, what it comes down to is it's very hard in law to distinguish the difference between Ron Galela stalking Jackie and Assi's family in a bush and, say, when journalists took photos of Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, these snuck and stolen photos led to Bill Clinton's impeachment. She ever said anything to you when she's seen you taking a picture? Oh, yes. Uh, once at the airport, September 69, she says to a New York City policeman, lock this man up. That's all she's ever said? Oh, she said other things. Ever say hello to you? No. <laughs> See, she should have to be hounded by newsmen, um, press photographers, and everybody else, and, and the uh, peoples every time she goes out of her house. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis won a case in federal court today. She got a permanent injunction against freelance photographer Ronald Galella. Now, the court order says you've got to stay 100 yards from the building and 50 yards from Mrs. Onassis and her children. You carry a tape yes. measure with you? No. <laughs> a yard counter? No, I don't. You think you'll be photographing her again soon? I hope so. I hope that this court order is off me. So I would like to get back photographing my favorite subject. Ron's livelihood was quite literally made up by stalking and harassing Jackie and Assie. There's no other way of putting it. On top of this, there was a separate incident between him and Marlon Brando, where basically Brando 
punched Ron in the face. He did win this lawsuit. He got like $40,000. However, his image in Hollywood and society was that of like a leper. Not only did the celebrities hate him, but so too did the general public. Ron Galela had become so despised that he had reached his own level of infamy. These incidents made me famous. And it's an asset because I want the stars to see me after they shoot fast and they'll react to me. As time passed after the legal battle with Jackie O, he actually appealed it and managed to win. Now he was allowed within 25 feet of her. And obviously he broke the agreement. Jacqueline Onassis listed her grievances against one of her most persistent followers today, photographer Ron Galella. Charges that he violated a 1975 court order to come no closer than 25 feet from Mrs. Onassis. Photographer Ron Galella was told today by a New York judge that if he ever does it again, he'll be sent to jail for six years. Now, the reason she took me to court first thing was because I took pictures of John Jr. That was the main reason. She, she didn't mind pictures of herself. She wanted her children to be normal without publicity. I faced seven years in jail, a $120,000 fine. So I, um, I surrendered all rights to the three of them, Jackie and the children, for the rest of their lives. Ron has over three million photos in his archive. Despite being hated, his photos would appear in major publications. And he had taken some of the most iconic photos of these legendary superstars. And as time passed, whether it's rose-tinted lenses or a case of societal amnesia, people have started to look back on Ron's photos and started to see something else in them. The legendary artist Andy Warhol once said, my idea of a good picture is one that's in focus and of a famous person doing something unfamous. It's being in the right place at the wrong time. That's why my favorite photographer is Ron Galela. He, we had the same interests in the same celebrities. He liked J Jackie, he liked Elvis and Liz Taylor, etc. And he was too shy. See, he was a shy guy. I was more of an outsider. And being an outsider, I liked that because I want to be in control. I'm the artist. Many of the biggest galleries on earth are home to Ron's photos. They also sell to private collectors, some who own hundreds of Ron's photos and will buy them for big bucks. Ron had become very wealthy. He lived in a massive home. He had achieved a level of fame in his own regard. But with all that said, the question of morality is still unanswered. We asked Galella if harassing a 71 year old woman in this fashion was a decent way to go about making a living. I believe in what I do and I do not have any guilt. The people out there want a glimpse of her, want to know her habits, her lifestyles. Even if she's private, the fact that she shields herself with an umbrella, that picture is interesting. It reflects her personality. Did you ever think for a minute, I should ask first before I take the picture? I don't ask permission because by asking permission, you would lose the spontaneity, the surprise expressions. Throughout my whole research on Ron, the main thing I wanted to know was, did he have morals? Like, did he ever feel bad about doing this? When you listen to him speak, he doesn't come across as like a slimy, evil person with bad intentions. And in fact, I, I couldn't help but find something likable about him. By all accounts, when Ron is in conversation with people, he is always respectful and polite. Yeah, he might jump out of your child's birthday cake to take a photo of you, but he will say thank you. There seemed to be more to him about paparazzi than just the money. What was it? That's the greatest thing on the face, not to get the teeth, to get the beginning of the smile, because it holds the future. That is what Da Vinci painted, and I got this the camera. Ron Galela really is an artist. His motivation is never to sell shock and drama. His dislike for the way that studios would represent these celebrities as overly glamorous, etc., led him, ironically, to wanting to show these celebrities as real humans, away from being simply beautiful objects. But in doing so, he himself would dehumanize them and treat them like animals in a zoo. But most of these celebrities um, want their picture taken. The stars in Hollywood are, are selling their face, their, their physical makeup. And that's what we try to capture on film. 
Ron died on the 30th of April, 2022. He had a crazy life. He lived to see the beginning of the paparazzi industry in America and what it eventually devolved into. But ultimately, look, we can point fingers at the paparazzi, even celebrities themselves for encouraging it at times. But at the end of the day, it's our obsession as humans with the concept of fame. We're interested in people. That's what this business is all about. Successful people, famous people. We like celebrities. We like our heroes. We, we all want to be rich and famous too. <laughs> Here we go. I'm with Ron Paletta, the most the original paparazzi. <laughs> and the most famous living photographer. Is that what do you know yeah. who this guy is? Are you kidding me? He photographed Jack Nolan. That's, right. That's right. I know that. I know who you are. If you like this video, you can help me research my future videos if you join me on Twitch, 3 p.m. on Wednesdays. Peace.